Hi, I'm Brigham Larson with Brigham Larson Pianos. And just today, we have finished this beautiful 1909 Erard piano. Literally today. We've had this piano for about a year and a half, uh, maybe going on two years, something like that, and it just was completed today. And it turned out incredible. Complete restoration on this gorgeous, gorgeous piano. I have, I'm so excited about this. Um, this has been a project in the making for quite a while. Um, I'm going to talk about how I acquired this piano. I want to talk about Erard. Uh, this Erard is a really, really special piano maker going back pre-French Revolution, of course. This was manufactured in Paris. This particular piano was manufactured in Paris, um, and it's, it was manufactured in Paris going back pre-French Revolution. So I'm going to talk about that as well, and then I'm going to show you this particular piano. I'm, I'm kind of bursting with excitement about it. Um, okay, so uh, why don't we start with... Uh, uh, how, how we acquired this particular piano. Okay, my wife and I, a couple years ago, we went to Paris looking specifically, I spent two years in Paris, so I'm, I'm pretty familiar with, um, with, with Paris. We went specifically looking for French pianos that were extraordinary. Pianos that we could bring back to the United States, rebuild, and present to, um, to, to people here. Something that, that a project that, that has been kind of a pet project of mine and this is the very first piano that's come out that's complete we have two more in the back that we haven't even started on yet but uh, so so when we were in Paris we found three pianos total that are really extraordinary pianos like nobody in the United States has ever seen before and as you can tell this is absolutely a perfect um, example you can see I mean if you these two pianos right here are absolutely gorgeous but they're typical American style they're from the same era this one is about the same era 19 I think this might actually be the same year 1909 same exact same year but this is manufactured in Baltimore and then the Henry F Miller this one is a 1911 so two years later manufactured in Boston so separated by a few thousand miles of the Atlantic and you have these style differences um, Okay, so we found this particular piano in an apartment in Paris. It was a professor um, who was who was moving. Got a new she got a new job, um, and she just couldn't take this piano with her. It was it was I, I could tell that it was absolutely extraordinary when I first saw it. I knew okay, this is why I came all of this way. I am looking for this one. So of course, this was the first one that I rebuilt. Um, and so so my wife and I. Personally, we moved this piano on the third floor down a spiral staircase. Um, so we personally moved this piano down the spiral staircase, loaded up in the truck, and took all the logistics, get it to the shipping port in Love, and then uh, and then got it shipped across. And it was an exciting day when it showed up, but not as exciting as today, the day that it's complete. Okay. So that's, that's the story of this particular piano. And, and I've got a video that, uh, that we'll dredge up. We'll find a couple years old video now that we'll find of, of me um, in the apartment where we found this piano. Um, so we will look for that. Um, okay, Erard specifically started about 17, uh, 1760s, 1770s. Um, Erard himself was a, uh, he was a, a uh, genius, kind of, uh, what's the word, prodigy, cabinet maker, and then he went on to apprentice with a harpsichord maker, and then, of course, this time pre-revolution, and so harpsichords were kind of still very much in fashion. Pianos had caught on by the 1770s in Germany, and were just kind of catching on. They caught on in England, and were just now catching on in France as well, among the aristocracy. And so Erard, apprenticing with his harpsichord maker, then he um, saw the writing on the wall and got into piano making. And, um, and so he was, he, he was making pianos through the 1770s, 1780s, and by uh, 1789, when the French Revolution hit, things were getting way too hot in Paris. And anyone that was in the aristocracy, Erard himself was not in the aristocracy, but all of his clients, all of the people that he worked for as an artisan, um, were aristocracy, and so he was in pretty serious trouble um, with the revolutionaries. So he fled to uh, London, where he continued to make pianos in London. Um, 
He was also the inventor of, actually on grand pianos, a major component called the repetition lever. That's another story altogether, but, but very, very important, very influential in the history of, of piano making. Um, Erard continued to be made in Paris um, until relatively recently um, when they, they're, they're no, longer, no longer made, but uh, uh, unfortunately. But, um, but a huge, huge name right up there, almost, almost on the level of Cristofori, uh, right up there with other names like Broadwood that are just, just absolute foundation, foundation of this world that I love so much, the, the world of pianos. Okay, so that's, that's how we got the piano and that's the history briefly of Erard. Now, this particular piano, um, okay, let's talk about the cosmetics as if the cosmetics don't already speak loud and clear for themselves. Um, I think they do, but, uh, but briefly, this, the, this veneer is very typical of the, the kinds of pianos that we were seeing in France when we were over there. Just absolutely ex exquisite veneer work. This is lemon tree, lemon wood, um, and, it, uh, and obviously the brass, uh, brass trim throughout. Just absolutely extraordinary. Uh, these these candelabras, of course, the um, is they're, they're traditional. I think I think electricity. When this particular piano was was manufactured, electricity was just coming out. So so having candles here to illuminate your music um, was maybe maybe less essential, but uh, but traditional. This is how pianos have, have looked. Of course, when Erard himself would have been designing pianos. Uh, 100, uh, 120 years, whatever, before this piano was manufactured. Um, of course, candles to illuminate your music were essential. Okay, uh, this was a very unique project in that, in that not only is it totally unique on the outside, it's also totally unique, or at least, at least in terms of, as compared to American pianos, um, totally unique on the inside. So, having worked on about, personally, about 20,000 pianos in my career, I have never ever seen anything like this. Um, and I'm, I'm confident that, that uh, anything that exists in the United States like this is extremely rare. Frankly, I doubt that, that uh, a piano like this exists anywhere in the United States. Maybe there's been a person here or in there or there that has imported a French piano um, into the United States, um, but um, but to have one that's also been rebuilt and one an exquisite rebuild on the inside. This piano sounds and plays amazing, um, but also one that, that looks like this. I, I just can't imagine. I I doubt if if you are watching this video and you know of another piano like this, please let me know. Um, oh, and I just thought of one other brief historical tidbit about Erard. Uh, uh, Chopin and Liszt, at, at the time, of course, were, were huge uh, rock stars of the music world, and uh, Liszt was Liszt was an Erard man. They they kind of had their own camps in the same way that like Michael Jordan was a Nike man. He's the rock star of the sports world. Um, Liszt was the rock star of the piano of music world, and and he was and he his camp was was in with Erard. Okay. Um, that aside. Okay, let's let's listen to it briefly. It's kind of a shame that I'm not a classical music player myself because I feel like I should be playing some playing some list on this piano. It, it really surpassed my expectations. It sounds just awesome. It sort of feels like sacrilege to me. Just kind of plunk, <laughs> plunking out chords, and especially jazz chords. That's what I know. Okay, I'll play. I'll play a little bit more in a minute. Okay, let's look at the inside. Everything has been done on the inside. Um, oh, and this, by the way, is the. Uh, is the music holder um, that recesses, put your music there.
and then when you're done with your music, just fold it back in like that and close the lid back up. Um, did we get a shot, by the way, of it closed? I can't remember. Mm -mm. Really, wow. Amazing piano. And by the way, the, 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 uh, this is the natural finish. This is the color, as you'll, if we find those videos of me in the, this apartment in Paris, you'll see that this was the color. And when we sanded it down, we found that it was also the, uh, the, natural, um, the natural color of the wood. Okay, so let's, let's go in here. So everything that we've done, um, of course the keys are replaced also. We actually, by regulation, we had to remove the ivory. There was an ivory originally on this piano, and unfortunately, even though it's over 100 years ago, that the elephants were slaughtered, um, we were not allowed to import the ivory. Okay, let's open this up to see this beautiful restoration job. Okay, very unusual hammers. Uh, in the, the shape and size of the hammers. Those have been, of course, all replaced. All the dampers have been replaced, all of the strings, all of the tuning pins, the, the bass strings, all of the tuning pins, by the way, beautiful, beautiful job on the hammers, dampers, and, and restringing by, by a technician here named Joe Foreman, who's absolutely brilliant. Beautiful job, everything lining up. Uh, and, and I actually went through and, and did a pitch raise on this piano um, after the restringing and, and the restringing is perfect. The torque is, is exactly where I like to see it, about 100, between 100 and 120 pounds of torque, which, which is important for longevity. And so it's consistent across all 220 or so pins. <coughs> and everything is immaculately clean. It's gorgeous, not only on the outside, but on the inside. And we've got some, we've got some French writing in here. I can't remember where it was, but there's craftsmen that have signed their name in here. Open this up on the bottom. Again, beautiful uh, work on the on the trap work and on the strings down there. All, all strings are individually tied. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's just play it one last time and then we'll be done. surpasses my expectations like in every way um, and maybe because when when I was two years in France I got a fair number of opportunities to play the piano in France and the French people absolutely adore jazz like they went absolutely crazy for it so maybe I can be excused for playing jazz on this beautiful Erard um, thanks for watching amazing piano please come check it out see what you think